welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds Podcast. This is episode number 102, entitled Matt vs. Glossy Screens. It was published on Thursday the 22nd of October 2020. My name's Nathan Wrigley and I'll be joined in a minute by David Wormsley so that we can have our debate. But before then, just a few bits of housekeeping. Head over to wpbuilds.com. That's our website. It's a website featuring loads of information about all things WordPress. So we do a podcast episode on a Thursday. That's what you're listening to now. We do a news article on a Monday. It's an audio. It's about half an hour long where I sum up the WP Builds weekly WordPress news each week. And also on a Monday live, 2 p.m. UK time at wpbuilds.com forward slash live. We have our live session with notable WordPress guests. You can come along and join in the commentary and it's basically a little bit of fun. Head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. That page enables you to keep in touch with everything that we do. We can send you emails to do with deals that we find out about. And at the moment, with Black Friday around the corner, this might be a good idea. But also we'll keep you in touch with all of the things that are going on that we produce in terms of content that I just mentioned. Head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash deals where you're going to find a whole host of WordPress deals. And wpbuilds.com forward slash advertise. If you would like to have your product or service put in front of a WordPress specific audience, a bit like Alpha Hosting have done. Don't you find it frustrating that most web hosting isn't built for e-commerce? Alpha Hosting's Mercury plan is $25 a month and includes four times the resources of their competitors. Our listeners also get 50% off their first three months of service. So go to alphahosting.com forward slash WP Builds. It was also brought to you by AB Split Test. Do you want to set up your AB Split Test in record time, like in a couple of minutes? Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, anything. And the best part is it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder and the WordPress Block Editor. You can check it out and get a free demo at absplittest.com. And we do thank our sponsors for helping us to put on the WP Builds podcast. Speaking of the podcast, what are we talking about today? Matt versus glossy screens. This is really interesting and it threw up an absolute ton of information that I didn't know about. Basically, David had a problem. He needed a new screen. He didn't know what to get. And then something arrived that he wasn't expecting and it made him go down this rabbit hole of what the screen might be showing you. Clearly, you want a screen which is going to be identical to everybody else's so that what you're looking at when you design a web page is exactly the same as everybody else. But that is not the case. You can find out more in today's episode. I hope that you enjoy it. Hello, today's debate we are discussing matte versus glossy screens. So I'm going to win this one easy because uh, Nathan <laughs> said earlier that matte and glossy remind him of a Las Vegas cabaret act. So definitely, <laughs> you can imagine them with their with their selection of white tigers. Uh, yeah, that's matte and glossy. It's brilliant. What, a, what what have we got ourselves into today, David? This is this is new and uncharted and possibly unsafe territory. Uh, it is. Uh, it's a, a really it is a sham debate. This one because it's as silly as matte or gloss paper, and it's going to get even sillier because you revealed to me earlier that you can't remember which is matte and which is glossy most of the time. No, no, so. I really can't. No, I genuinely can't. If you ask me to buy matte paint, I don't know whether that's the shiny one or the not quite so shiny one. But I'm going to try. Um, this time. And actually, there is a lot in this. We've, mm. I think both of us have learned a great deal in the last couple of days and specifically in the last hour whilst we've been talking about this. There is loads in it, much more than I thought. Yeah, well, we're going to divert a little bit, aren't we? Because it gives us a chance to talk about all other things. I mean, clearly there are some designers that have a preference for one over the other when it comes to matte and glossy. But given that we, all of us really need to consider what our visitors might see and how that experience might be vastly different depending on what they use. We're going to move into all different things that might affect the viewing experience. So browsers, eye care, software, color gamut range, knits, 
I'm looking forward to talking about knits. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously and white tigers as well, you know, at some point. <laughs> white tigers, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, well, we've really, we've just learned stuff on this, haven't we? Should I tell them a the bit of a backstory? Why, yeah, why okay. Has come up? Yeah, that, because, because there that, is a big story for you in this, isn't there? Oh, God, yeah. Well, my computer died a couple of months ago, and they've been trying to fix it, and I've been looking for a new laptop because I gave up, and I'm waiting for the fix it. And I've rejected one laptop that came. It had kind of the perfect um, requirements, really, for what I need. I need Camtasia to run, so that's quite intensive mm. use. So I got a gaming laptop, and it came, and it just looks so dirty to me. It looks so beigey where it should be grey. All the sparkle are gone. I'd never even heard of, really, anti-glare before this. Clearly, I must have had glossy machines all the time. So I sent it back thinking it was defective and um since i've been looking around all the different showrooms and i've realized there's such uh it's so difficult to get a, a glossy machine which is what i thought i wanted but actually today i'm going to argue matt because i've had my matte machine back to me for some time and i kind of like it mm. uh, when you say that you 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 got this new laptop and you opened it up and everything looked a bit dirty can you describe like what was disappointing to you? What were the things that your eye perceived that were f at fault? Uh, well, <laughs> the first thing I noticed was that everything that I know to be grey, all the kind of user interfaces that I know are grey, had gone to this slight like, beige, and that kind of felt kind of off. I didn't like that. And then also the next experience really was the fact that um, – the, the the vibrancy of all the colors had mm. disappeared. So mm. a lot of the interfaces I was used to, you know, really kicked out some bright colors. That, and this wasn't, it was all really flattened out. So there's that. And then to top it up, I looked at a site that I was working on that had some really subtle grays that were distinguishing the different rows within the page. And I really couldn't see them very clearly. So right. I thought, well, this is a defective computer. But no, apparently this is the experience many have. Did you did you endeavor to sort of change the the settings, you know, the contrast, the brightness, all of those things to to correct it before you sent it back, or did you just think, no, there's a there's like a problem with it um, because out of the box I just can't see the difference between what I know to be two different greys. Yeah, I did. But I, I think possibly, I don't know this, because I got a replacement a computer and I've been able to fiddle around. So the, the thing that I'm looking at today is something I've slightly changed with my graphics card. And I've got the balance between, um, you know, what I remember. I've got it kind of how I like it now, but it has been with altering the defaults. And I couldn't do it first time around. Maybe it's just because I, I just didn't do it right and I gave up very quickly. The interesting thing was, you know, I was um, sent a... Because I thought, okay, I can live with this. It's got the spec that I need. It's just the screen and I need a monitor. So we talked to our guys. They brought over a couple of monitors. And we tried them out. It looked exactly the same. I thought, nah. And I can't have this. And it's only later that I realized it's actually what I've been looking at was matte screens, not glossy ones, which I'm used to. Right. OK. I am. Um, I, I can completely vouch that there is a full difference between the way that these things work, because at the minute I've got in front of me, I've got um, I've got a MacBook. It's not a very new MacBook. It's quite a few years old. That's mm. what I'm looking at right now. But to my left is an LG screen and it. it it was bought, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And even even 10 years ago, it wasn't a very expensive one. But basically, it's there just for me to put other stuff that I'm not really concentrating on, so email and so on. And before we recorded, press record on this episode, I started flipping things from one screen to the other just mm. to deliberately see if I could spot a difference. And the, the difference is astonishing. It, that is to say that certain things are completely invisible to the eye on the cheap matte mm. monitor particularly gray um so for example we're all in the web it will mean something to us if we talk about hexadecimal f6 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 mm -hmm. uh, it's white it's completely the same as f f f f f f on the cheap monitor whereas if i look at it on the mac there's complete contrast um, and again, right now I'm staring at a Google Doc and the Google Doc pretends to be on a piece of paper and it's surrounded by grey to add some sort of contrast to that. That grey totally disappears. So on my cheap monitor, it the whole thing looks like a big piece of paper. There is just no difference at all. 
And then that was replicated in everything. You know, the yellows look different. The reds look different. Everything looks different. The only thing which doesn't seem to look different is blue. Blue seems to be <laughs> about the same. Ah, it's interesting. Now, the thing is, it's, it wasn't to do with cheap monitors, I don't think. Well, my wife's, I think, 11-year-old Acer is what I've been using while I've been trying to get a computer. And it's, it just shows me the colors as I expect them to be with the subtleties of gray being there and it's really lovely and of course that's what I wanted I couldn't understand why I was looking at much more expensive monitors and and laptops and not getting that kind of color but I think there is a there is a preference I think um I the, the one thing that you didn't spot when you were just doing your tests is the the issue I had with about the sort of uh, the slight change of hue to what should be there, mm -hmm. which is created by the anti-glare surfaces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I did. You know, it was always brown. And in fact, all the, the, all the monitors I've looked at uh, going into a Dell showroom recently, they were the same. They all had a slight brownishness to all of the greys. I guess the concern here, like you alluded to earlier, is that no matter what device you're working on, you've got to be mindful that the subtle things that you put in, which may be subtle but important. So, for example, if you, I don't know, in, in a table, you've got alternating rows and one's white and one's grey and one's white. And that's the only difference between the rows. Mm. You, you may have designed something which is completely white to the <laughs> yeah. to the person viewing it. And, you, you know, you've got this impression that you've built something and it looks really nice and it's very subtle. And your subtlety is completely lost on the device that they're looking at. So that's... That's why I think this debate can happen because there is yeah. an importance here, and we we and honestly, completely ignorant to it until until we started looking at it. So, okay, do you want to dive into sort of discuss describe why you prefer one over the other? Okay, well, I'm going to put the argument. I'll put the argument. Maybe you should do the argument for glossy first. Okay, because well, I think that's stronger. My um. The only experience that I can relate is, is A, I've got, um, like I said, I've got this MacBook. And when you put the screen off, that is to say, when you shut the computer down and you're basically presented with a black screen, it, it, it's a complete reflecting surface, right? It's basically mm -hmm. a piece of glass as far as I can work out. Maybe it's not glass. Maybe it's something else like Gorilla Glass or some other, I don't know, c component. I don't really know. It may well have some sort of coating over the top. I don't know about that either. But when it's off, I can, I could, I could brush my hair in it if you know what I mean. You know, I could do my teeth. It's, it's, it reflects absolutely everything. It also attracts fingerprints like nobody's business. I mean, it really does. When the screen's off, I can see a history of where I've touched it since I last cleaned it. You know, every single touch leaves an impression, and that impression is still there when you switch it on. So I'm looking. I've just turned it off whilst we're recording. I'm looking at the screen and fingerprints that are really obvious are staying in front of me. So I can see them on the Google Doc. And now that I've seen them, it's annoying me. Um, so anyway, that's just to give you some sort of contrast. However, the an article which we read, which I'll post mm -hmm. in the show notes, um, which might be, I mean, it's you couldn't have had a better a better blog if you wanted it. It's called pcmonitors.info. Obviously, somebody who's like really into this posted an article where they they tried to sort of describe to big people like me and you, beginners in this space, exactly what the difference is. And on the face of it, just to paraphrase very quickly, mm. the the glossy screens because there's less chemical stuff because there's less sort of um, abrasion that they you know the, the the matte ones they have to do things to it to stop it reflecting so they they coat it with things or they rub it with things to make it um reflect the light in a in an entirely different way so it's not quite so crisp that has an impact not only upon the light that's reflected back at you from the room that you're in or the sunshine but it has an impact on the light that's emitted from the screen itself and that is mm. to say it diffuses it so uh, a glossy screen, and again, go to this article because it explains it much better, but there's these diagrams of the light coming out the screen, and it, it comes out in more or less straight lines. So the reds come straight out, the greens come straight out, and the blues come straight out. And that's, that's desirable. You want the light to come directly out of the screen. However, yeah. 
with the with the the matte ones, this coating, whatever it is, and, and I think there's a whole range of different things that they do to make it matte, that diffuses the light. So rather than coming out in a straight line, if you like, it, it kind of diffuses. So some goes left, some goes right, up, down, and so on. And so in a, in theory, the quality of that image is is comp is is compromised. And so that's right off the bat, that's probably one of the first things that I would say is that you are kind of hopefully getting a better quality image. And I can only imagine that that's why the likes of Apple and, you know, love them or hate mm. them, Apple do strive to do the best technology out there. I'm guessing that's why their their equipment has a glossy screen. Now, forgive me if they've moved on from that since my Mac has been bought, but that it, it does that's I presume why they use it you know there's no distortion of the colors everything comes out exactly as it should come out and in my tests on the screens in my house and there's a number of them the the glossy screen can cope with the subtle grays way better yeah. than than the matte ones can so there's my opener yeah absolutely and i think that's it's been a criticism for the the matte fans who not the mac fans the <laughs> mac fans who like yeah. matt um they uh but the fact that they have held i think that's still true today at least from what i could pick up through googling um is that they have stuck with glossy and i can see it because it's just you know go around showrooms it really is vibrant and looks great i'm going to argue the at the matt side now having hated it <laughs> you know a couple of weeks now and now i've managed to adjust to it now first thing is obviously if i wanted to do the thing i really should do which is take lots of selfies of me near the beach enjoying the lifestyle i've tried to carve out for myself <laughs> <laughs> I, I might be able to do it with my <laughs> anti-glare screen i might actually be able to work on the um on the beach but it's very unlikely but i think there is something in it now now you can adjust a lot of the screens to the issues that I had. I I am I am now kind of liking the matte texture. I should I need to preference this a little bit because people, anybody who knows about this stuff, will be pulling me up because there is apparently obviously a difference between um, matte actual matte screens because that's built into the glass and an anti glare cover, which is what I have. Mm -hmm. So potentially I could remove it, um, but my warranty would uh, it would. Yeah, it caused me a problem there. Oh, so um, so the the anti glare thing is a is like a removable layer. That is to say, you remove it once and it's gone. You're not going to be able to reapply it. But it, it can. It, it's something which in in the factory is is stuck on as a separate component, as opposed yeah. to being built into the. So matte. Let me just get this straight. Matte is the, where the screen itself. You know, you can't tear it off and throw it in the bin. Anti glare, you can. Or can it yeah. sometimes just be like something that's sprayed on or something like that? I think for all intents and purposes, but we say the same thing. Okay. Whether, uh, the the way it's made matte is okay. is perhaps a technical difficult, uh, difference, which we wouldn't include normally. So I'm going to count mine anti-glare as a matte screen. Okay. Also, there's another argument, which I still don't understand, between anti-glare and anti reflective as well so there's there's even more subtleties in the type of cover that you might use as okay. well so we can't we can't get into that but yeah i think the i have noticed that even though my lighting is quite good and i don't generally see a reflection of myself in the glossy the whole reason for the eye strain for the matte is to reduce that isn't it those distractions that you get when you're looking at a screen things that your eye has to compensate because obviously human beings uh, are glued to see movement and look for variations all the time. So it's it's going to be easier on the eye. And I think I've already started to found, find that. And I kind of do find that even though I didn't have, I didn't think I had an issue before having this matte screen is definitely helping with the experience. And I think the other argument would be, and that I've seen some designers who work in print mostly, who will do clever stuff like calibrate their screens to get you know the color they expect to go into print and they're not going to get they they're going to want something flattered out because what i'm seeing as matte colors when i've got it by default it's much closer to how something is going to come out in print and it's something i noticed even though my first <laughs> issue was seeing this kind of hue and seeing everything flattened out when i looked at our, our own brown colors for our, uh, our company 
when I looked at those colors on my matte screen, it was much closer to the print-ups we have, some little business cards. So I thought, mm, it's probably a, a, a proper representation of true life and perhaps people's true branding out there. I have a memory, and this, again, may be going, maybe this is no longer the case, but I have a, a friend of mine who's a graphic designer, and she she gets paid very, very well to, to design graphics, but most of it is for print. She does a little yeah. bit on the internet, but most of it is going into magazines and out the, you know, through the post and whatnot. And memory tells me that she bought a monitor where out of the box, the calibration was such that it would truly reflect what the mm. what the printer would achieve. And so, you know, she could hold up the, the printed version onto the screen and the, the reds would be the same and the blues. I mean, I'm sure there was some variation, but mm. basically what she looked at would truly represent what was printed. And I, I remember at the time thinking, that's weird. I didn't even know, and that was the first time this had ever come across my path. I didn't even know that there was a... There was a way I honestly thought that you could just sort of adjust your way into any configuration, you know, by doing the contrast and the mm. brightness and the RGB and all of that. Um, but the the fact that you would spend additional money on a monitor specifically for that task sort of caught me mm. short. I thought that was really fascinating. I'm also quite intrigued by your your discussion there about like strain on the eye. Do, do we mm -hmm. know? Maybe you know, because I certainly don't, but I, I feel like tired i don't i can't describe it i feel like a tiredness like like i want to blink more or like the water's not coming into my eyes or something i do feel it after staring at a screen all day and is the intention of a matte screen is one of the intentions of a matte screen then to reduce that strain because there's less how to describe it there's less direct light coming in because it's being diffused a little bit more it doesn't cause that yeah i think when i think there's a lot of different sides to this there's one is reducing um well there's another addition to this one because along with anti-glare screens there's usually some eye care software which actually takes down some of the blues which uh, are apparently more soothing then you're also reducing the light with a lot of these which is helping with the light and i'm throwing in my own if you like psychological interpretation of what they're meaning when they talk about the reflections being distracting and tiring and i think that's true because we are as human beings geared wired to kind of see our movement so if we're moving and we're seeing that reflection in our screen that's just going to tire our experience a little bit that's, that's but that's kind of i'm adding my own layer to this really yeah that's interesting i know that um and again we won't get into this right now but i know that most mobile phones nowadays come with a a setting which is easy to access, usually in the sort of like notifications at the top, where you just click a button and it's usually called like night mode or something like that. And it, yeah. it strips out, I think it's the blue. I'm 90% I'm sure it's the mm, blue. Yeah. And by stripping out the blue, it there is something about the blueness which causes you to be more awake. And so the idea is that you would do this at night um, mm. And then, if you can, if you if you're looking at your screen, it's less likely to cause you to be alert. You know, you, you're, yeah. you're having a much more passive reading experience, and it looks it looks more sepia, shall we say? You know, whites mm. become kind of reddy brown. It's very subtle, and in fact, after staring at it for a few minutes, you can't even really see it anymore. Your eyes quickly adjust to it, and then when you turn it off again, suddenly everything's like, oh, that's far too much. You know, it's too much white. So I, I know that there's a lot of science in that. I, I can't imagine that Apple and, and Google behind Android would, would waste time putting that menu in there if there wasn't some rock-solid science behind it. Yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure more people are looking at the screens in ways that I won't because I, I do want it really bright and I do want those distinctions, but people who go to the site won't see it. So, But, you know, I've grown fond of this. Ma I, I do think, in a way, this flattening out the colours has been a good thing. I, I did do some really amateur calibration because we used to have a little business that was selling cards and we used to print those cards as well mm. so I had to give the printers a version of it so I did have a real good attempt initially when we had a good printer I used to sort of print them out and look at the colors and then try and adjust the screen calibrate it to match them exactly and you know it's very difficult to when you've got full glossy going on you the vibrancy of something like the magenta color that comes through you just don't see in print right 
right? That's interesting. You know, yeah, yeah. You, that, you don't quite get that 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 vibe, that the vibrancy that you see in print. And I just think sometimes if you're if you've only worked on the, um, the web designing things here to try and get this brand coloring that's going to work on print and the screen, I think you have to be quite conscious of that. Yeah, that that and, and of course that's the point, right? Is that we're designing something and we're looking at it on our own screen. And mm-hmm. in most cases, everything will be 100% fine. But the I think what we're dealing with really is the subtleties around the edges, the, the little things which you think are very clever, where you've contrasted things which are just about detectable. It may be that they're completely indetectable, undetectable, inde- I don't know, one yeah, of those words. Yeah. Um, and and so it, it, it makes us think a little bit more. You know, maybe you need to be inspecting these designs in the same way that you worry about SEO and you worry about fonts and you worry about all of that, you need to worry about the the way it actually looks on different monitors. You need to try this on, yeah. you know, on your cheap monitor, your matte monitor, your expensive glossy monitor, your whatever. You need to try yeah. it on a bunch of things and see if it's visible. Because honestly, my monitor on my left, I I I swear that F6 is white. <laughs> And yet on my map monitor, there is no doubt it's so far away from white. It just doesn't even look vaguely white. It's really interesting. Yeah. I, well, I've had to move. I mean, instantly I saw that if I was going to use uh, FA, 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 which is kind of really just kind of one up from white, which I could see on my wife's cheap computer. And I thought was a nice subtlety that I wanted to distinguish rows is just invisible to the majority of people who will be buying a computer now and getting it out by default. So, <clears throat> you know, never again will I do that. And it's made me think as well, you know, about uh, some of the hues that are going to be there. That brownish hue does make a, 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 a difference. It made a difference to a yellow that I picked. Right, just you know, so yep. yep. Well, I suppose yeah, I suppose yellow probably does contain. Well, it, depending on its brightness, for want of a better yeah. word, it will have quite a bit of the white in it. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, there's the whole sort of thing. I mean, this gets more and more complicated because there's so many things at play here. So, mm. one thing that I didn't really realise until Peacher told me was that. Um, the browsers don't even display color in the same way. I mean, literally, they don't use the same, well, let, let's say engine, for want of a better word, for producing the color. And I know that you explored that a little bit. Mm, yeah. And, um, well, from what I found really only this morning was that um, Firefox and Safari use the sRGB color profile where Chrome, and that would include uh, Microsoft's The Edge now, has its own system. And you can force it to use the same, but I mean, most people are not going to do that. They they don't mess around with their browsers. So I I will admit, though, I tried it. I've switched mine over and I cannot tell the difference. Did you, was there a, did did you go through like a a palette of different colors to see if there was a difference? Because it strikes me that we're probably on the very edge here of, of whether something's visible or not. There might be the tiniest little bit of a difference, but you can hardly imagine that Firefox and Safari are going to use something which is, you know, wildly different from what Chrome is using and vice versa. Um, but it's interesting they don't do it in the same way. And you can force Chrome to adopt the sRGB uh, profile. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just, I'll, I'm just i going to test it out later. I think I'll leave a version of it with it on and then turn it off again on the other one to see if I can compare it side by side mm. just to see if the difference just out of interest. But... Uh, I mean, that's probably quite a subtle one we don't need to worry about too much, but it's just there, isn't it? And it's, <clears throat> it, uh, I've never thought about any of these issues, really, yeah. uh, at least for the last eight years since I've been doing it professionally, So, because I got used to the tools I use. Is there any sort of, like, um, <clears throat> quality that, you know, is there, are there any facts and figures or number or spectrum or unit that you can use to sort of get an idea of the quality of your monitor you know if you're if you're into buying a new computer can you is there like a a unit that you can look for to say okay this is this is an 80% uh, or a 60% or whatever to judge how it's going to look when you finally get it out of the box to avoid the disappointment that you thought you had when you got your new laptop Oh, nice segue, Nathan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like it. Color gamut. I was looking into this again. This is another misleading thing on my journey for getting a new laptop. So um, I'd never considered 
looking into the details of what my machine's color gamut is. And I'll just read from this snippet, which I think explains it best from somebody's site. So, um, most decent, <clears throat> excuse me, normal com monitors will cover 100% of sRGB color space, which translates into about 70% of Adobe's RGB space. Anything above 90 is fine, according to this article, but displays, including some cheap tablets, laptops, and monitors may only cover 60 to 70%. Now, the interesting thing is, I don't think any of the manufacturers of the devices give you this. The only information I got on my particular model was through people doing their own tests um, with their own tools. And mine, uh, this is another reason why I sent it back, it came back with 51%. So, you know, the cheap ones are supposed to be 60 to 70. Mine was quite an expensive laptop and it was only 51 according to this one test. But again, I think it's something we can't rely on um, because again, so I've read something else. So, so does this mean then that okay? So, normal monitors. Let me just re, 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 mm. read that sentence. Uh, most decent normal monitors will cover a hundred percent of the sRGB color space. So, a decent monitor will cover that. So, you know, they'll do sRGB perfectly, basically. But that's only seventy percent of the color space which Adobe have used, and they're calling that Adobe RGB space. Um, so is that to say then that Adobe software will, there are colors that you can produce, let's say in Photoshop for want of a better word, that you cannot see on some <laughs> monitors. They're literally indistinguishable. I mean, I don't mean they're invisible. I just mean that, you know, yeah. the, the difference between this one and this one, because they're so close to one another, they're just indistinguishable on a cheap monitor or a monitor which doesn't have this 60, 70, 80, 90%, whatever. But on other monitors, they would be distinguishable. It must be. I mean, you do see wow. with the sRGB color space that they'll go over the 100%. So this is 100 and something which will be closely matching Adobe's. But I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? If we go right back to the early web, and even when I started, it was still advised to use web safe colors, the 216 colors that were safe to use on the web. Now we're in billions of colors that people talk about when do you, they talk about the monitors. Do you still stick with that, though? Do you do you still look at no. that palette of 216 colors, or do you just, you know, whatever, you know, you use that color picker, which is yeah. virtually able to produce anything, and you just settle on one that you really like? Yeah, it's not relevant now, is it? It hasn't been mm. for quite a long no. time now, no. so a good over 10 years. And I think unless you have to support devices that go, it must be even more than 10 years, 15 years now, I think no one has to worry about that. But it is fascinating, the fact that there are some people who are just going to, you know, if our presumption is right, they're going to see colours we can't even see, um, you know, because they've got better monitors yeah well that that's interesting and of course the i guess though that as time goes on the quality of the monitors and the ability to to approach 100 percent of this adobe rgb space will get better and better i mean after all the the technology is it's light emitting diodes really isn't it it's just whatever mm. they can produce you know in, in in tandem with one another um maybe they'll just get better at that for me the, the way that i normally try to achieve what I'm trying to achieve on the screen is just through the brightness buttons on my Mac. I'm, you know, I just turn it up and I turn it down. I have never fiddled with the color calibration on my Mac. I'm, I'm just totally assuming that Apple had given it a fairly decent set of defaults. But I'm I'm just sort of turning it up and down, and that brings us to uh, to the, <laughs> the lovely unit knit. Yes, we discovered, didn't we? You checked it out, and you've got a lot of knits. Yes, yes, so it would seem. So my <laughs> Mac, the the one that I've got, the particular model that I've got, is calibrated in at 320 nits. And nits, again, forgive our ignorance here, nits is a, basically, we think, a measure of just how literally, how much power it can push out, how much light it can emit. So, you know, imagine I was using my Mac outside in the dark and I'd got the screen on full brightness and it was just white, FFFF. If I was to turn it round and try to illuminate the the environment, my Mac could do 320 nits of that. And if you had one that did um, 150, you would illuminate less of the environment. It's just less 
less power behind it. But mine, it seems like that's all been left in the dust now because the latest Macs are up into the sort of five, five fifty, you know, nits. <laughs> so it's considerably brighter. And whilst on the face of it, maybe that's a good thing. That kind of feels mm. to me like we're just pushing more light into our eyes and causing tiredness again. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? It's the thing to want, you know. Um, more nits, the better. Yes, with we TVs. all need nits. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's it's a measure like lumen uh, is, but it's it's apparently more accurate. The measurement is an actual measurement of what your eye is going to see with nits. But yeah, we we want to have the right to have more nits. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but most of the time we want to seem to want to be able to turn down that glare. So it is interesting yeah. though because I'm looking, like I said a minute ago, I'm looking at my monitor right, and and I've got a Google Doc up there. So basically, the background to that, and I checked, is FFFFF. The the, the paper bit is FFF, and if I turn mm. the brightness down. What, what kind of this may seem really obvious right but it didn't to me the the white as you approach the monitor being off the white tends to black i mean it's mm. literally the white becomes not white it becomes a dark thing because the screen when it's off is black and so as soon as you turn the brightness down it's not like how to describe it it's not like all of those colors just got less vivid they literally mm. go towards being black so the grays become dark grays the white becomes much darker gray and i just, just that's quite fascinating to me so maybe that's the point you know the more nits that you can produce the whiter the white you can produce because th- on my screen at full throttle 320 nits that white to me looks like what i would assume white to be But clearly, turning it down a touch, it's gone totally different. It's now, I still think it's white, but it doesn't look like the white I had a moment ago. Yeah. Do you know, I I posed a question about this in the WP Builds Facebook group, and somebody answered about nits. And I think the point they were making, I'm sorry, I've forgotten their name. I should have made a note. Mm. But I think they were making the point with matte screens. This is probably an argument for, is that... On the whole, we're getting more nits from our laptops, so we can get that brightness that the matte screen might be dulling out. So it's getting rid of that anti-glare, the problem of that. But if we want the brightness, we're able to achieve that more. And I think I'm seeing that, even though I'm only, as I check mine out, I'm only 250 nits. You're 100 nits more than me. Well, I don't know if that's significant, but... Uh, my Mac monitor on full throttle, so there there is no mm. more brightness to be added, is looking pretty good. Quite like it. And then I've just got <laughs> mm. my phone, which is not very old. It's probably a couple of years old. It's a uh, it's a one plus phone, and um, I'm holding it up, and it's way brighter than the brightest mm. my Mac can achieve. I mean, so much brighter. The whites look white. Right, so I'm holding white yeah. on my phone next to white on my Mac, and suddenly my Mac white, which just seconds ago looked perfectly white, just <laughs> quite happy that that was white. Now it looks grey. <laughs> do you Completely think you know, grey? Do you think a lot of this is? I mean, my upset with my screen. Do you think it could just be the fact that it's about getting used to it? Maybe I'm I'm more of a fan of this laptop now, second time round, not just because of my adjustments, just because I think my eyes have compensated. Perhaps I will be able to see um, the FA, FA, FA once I've adjusted. Maybe it's just the, the, the difficulty going from one to the other. I would imagine that, that there is a couple of things there. The first thing... I would imagine that if the if the device itself, if the screen itself literally is incapable of demonstrating mm. the difference between um, FA, FA, FA and FFFF, then no, you're not going to be able to get used mm. to it. Um, sorry, you're not going to be able to see it. Mm, yeah. But I think it's quite likely that you just won't care after a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> you'll care if it's crucial. You know, if you literally can't tell the difference between rows, then that's going to tick you off and you, you and i guess the whole point of this is to warn everybody that this is important you need to do that you need to be mindful of those tiny subtle differences which which we've got we've referenced white more than anything else but i'm sure it's the same for yellows and everything hmm. but um but the yeah I, I i would imagine that 
very quickly your your eyes will just become adjusted to the thing that you're looking at so a perfect example is i've taken my phone away which just minutes ago demonstrated mm. to me perfectly that my mac was not as white as the phone was i've put the phone away and now i'm quite happy that my mac is white again that my brain has yeah. totally accommodated the, the fact that that's white and uh, interesting this raises a debate about well what is white or any color <laughs> you know i mean I'm sure that's white. 20 seconds, well, a minute ago, I was unsure. I, I thought it was grey. Now I think it's white. If I showed it to my wife, she'd probably say, well, that's white. But if I showed yeah. her the, the grey only surrounding the Google Doc, which is F8, I think it is, she'd mm. probably say, well, that's white. <laughs> um, yeah. And, it, you know, it brings into mind well, a classic thought that I'm sure all children have at some point. Does everybody see the same green as me? Anyway. <laughs> yes, I know. And then we've got so much color blindness as well that we, I mean, you know, if we were really thinking about this, probably not the screens that we need to worry about is having a bit of a knowledge about the common color blindnesses that are out there. I think there's something like 25% of males or something. I, I shouldn't make up figures like this off the top of my head. We should check it out. But uh, there's a really high number of males who have a form of color blindness. Yeah. Yeah. When you say so, color blindness, I always think of like the literal black and white vision. You know, you can only see uh, shades of gray. And I have a friend <laughs> who is just simply un unable to distinguish. Uh, but if memory serves, I'm pretty sure it's yellow. You know, if you show him something yellow and show him something red, they're yeah. both red. Everything tends to red, in other words, on the on the yellow side of things. Um, he can see red and he can identify red as red, but he can't distinguish yellows, I believe is right. And that's just fascinating as well, you know. So all these carefully thought out designs that you're trying to lure people in with your clever yellow collar palette is totally gone to him. It's just of no consequence. <laughs> Have you done one of those tests? You can get them online now, can't you? The the tests which check for color blindness. No. Oh, they, I want they, to oh. now. Oh, I'm going to do that. Oh, find them online. They're great fun. Um, you have to identify a letter or a number within these like little blobs of color with slight differences between them. So they will tend to be like that, reds, and there'll be some reds and yellows mixed in with some oranges. And if you can pick out the number nine or something in it, it's because you can see the distinction between this particular sort of yellow or whatever. It's really good. But wait, um, but wait, hang on. How does that work? Because we've just spent the whole time deciding that monitors can't show these colours anyway. So it may, <laughs> it, may, it may very well be that you're staring at something. It's complete fraud. There is no oh, difference yeah. there. And the, the monitor is responsible. <laughs> Perhaps not do it online. I presume they are using some sort of web safe, uh, web safe colour scheme. That's hysterical. All oh, right. Do you think we've covered this? I think so. Well, maybe just a couple of things to point out. Because yeah. uh, one thing I wanted to know when I was looking into this is which one, which one should you be getting? You know, if you're mm -hmm. doing the job that we're doing and you just have to have one monitor, most of us maybe have something to check with. Which one would you go for? And I, and I was trying to work out, find out if there was any statistics on the way that it's going, whether more people are using glossy or they're using mats. So you've got an idea of what most people are seeing. Couldn't find anything on it except a few pointers. I mean, I think it's pretty clearly the case that the gaming monitors like to put mat on it and the kind of high, powerful laptops will be that. Um, anything that needs to be touched, so those kind of two-in-one laptops come um, pads or obviously, as you say, the phones need to remain glossy. Yeah. So you can't really predict can you i think when it comes to your regular monitors and your laptops we're going to see more anti-glare more matte but you know more people are going to be on their mobiles yeah i think more devices will be yeah. glossy because mobile phones are just sort of taking over do you know for my part the, the one deciding factor for me would be and i, I think this is a pretty edge case because most people this won't matter at all but whether or not you need to work outside with it um <laughs> And that is to say that my my Mac, glossy Mac, is basically unusable on a summer's day. If I'm outside, unless I'm cocooned behind umbrellas or gazebos or whatever, and I'm stopping the majority of ambient light, so not just direct sunlight, but sunlight coming from any angle, I can't use it because all I can see is me. Um and that's that that with with um Matt you won't have, but with the glossy 
if the sun is in front of me, so it's behind the screen, I can see my reflection because the sun's reflecting off me. And if the sun's behind me, I can just see the sun, a big, bright, shiny blob in the way, and I, I can't overcome it. And I guess this is this is what all this nits is about, isn't it? Is the the ability to overcome uh, ambient light with the light emitted mm. from the screen. So I can, you know, Glossy may be able to cope with that in the future if if it can just literally pump out more light than the than the reflected light in, you know. But um, for me, I'm sticking with with Glossy because I like it. Despite the fingerprints, yeah. despite the fact that I can't really use it outside, yeah, I think it looks cracking to me. And I've got to stick with my map because I, it's grown on me and I'm really desperate to go down now to the beach and see if I can actually work on it. Yeah, just <laughs> d- don't take it in the sea. That's my only advice. <laughs> don't take it in the sea. Okay. Right, shall we knock it on the head there? Indeed. Okay, nice. Thanks. thanks, David. Enjoyed that. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Honestly, there was so much in there that I had no idea about before we started researching this. I must say that David did most of the work. I was just sort of riding on his coattails. But it was interesting, nevertheless, the idea that a monitor can be so different and display such different results. The WP Builds podcast was brought to you today by AB Split Test. Do you want to set up your AB Split Test in record time? The new AB Split Test plugin for WordPress will have you up and running in a couple of minutes. Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, anything. And the best part, it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder and the WordPress Block Editor. Check it out and get a free demo at absplittest.com. OK, don't forget to check out our deals page, wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. I'll be starting to put some things up there in the run up to Black Friday and Halloween. Also, head over to wpbuilds.com, just the generic website, and keep up to date with all that we're doing. I'd love you to subscribe to one of our email lists. That would be that would be enormously helpful to us. And I'm hoping some value to you as well. OK, we'll be back next Thursday for a podcast, Monday for the news. Stay safe. Cheesy music about to fade in. Bye-bye for now. Thank you